buddy. How you doing, Zach? I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, hang on just for a second. I am working on putting the liquor orders together for the bar and just kind of hanging out. Nice, man. What's up with you? I love it, man. Not much, man. Just uh, grinding away. This is uh, this is my nephew Dakota, by the way. Hey, Dakota. How's it going? How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. He's yeah, Elliot, uh, he, Elliot said you've uh, you've made some movement on this app. Yeah, man, and we're we're progressing for sure. It's it's uh, it's a grind. It takes a long time to make an app. Sure. And so while it's being built, I would say it's probably, you know, I finished the design phase, 187 screens or so. Okay. Um, so that's all done. And now I've got the programmers behind the scenes, putting them all together and linking them and that sort of thing. And uh, it's about halfway done through that, that phase. What up, E? What's up, Elliot? <laughs> What's up, buddy? Hey, sorry about that. Oh, all good, man. We're just getting started. We'll uh, we'll try and make this one somewhat quick. But I was just giving Zach an update here on what we're what we're doing. Um, no, that's I got I got all the time now. That my uh, claim review started at noon and it was supposed to be over at twelve thirty, but it went late. Sweet, yeah, no worries, man. No. Thanks for jumping on. Of course, yeah, I'm uh, good. Hey, Zach. Hey, Elliot. What's up, Bob? Nothing. How are you doing? I'm good. Just good, good. Some- work done this afternoon that's about it i can't right. see your you're kind of dark buddy yeah you know let me see if i can uh... <laughs> so yeah we're um we're getting there man we're getting there i expect to have a solid uh testing uh app here in you know september october time frame and then it'll be launched for real for real shortly after that so it's close sorry about that it's all good um, um so Tell me a little bit about this app, because I guess, I mean, I, I kind of know what Elliot's talked to me about a little bit, um, but you and I have actually never had the conversation, and I guess I'm not, I kind of get the gist of what directions it's going in, but I guess I'm just not, I don't know exactly what it is yet, I guess. Sure, yeah. No, and you're still working on it, too, so maybe you don't even know exactly what it is yet. Yeah, I'm, I got it pretty well figured out at this point. Obviously, you learn something every day. We, I've talked to a couple hundred servers. We've been doing these interviews now for um, a few weeks, and we're learning more and more on what servers and bartenders and those types of folks uh, are interested in. But sure. it, it started, you know, I was, I'm a sales dude, right? I travel around the country selling shit all the time, and I would spend a lot of time sitting in restaurants or at bars by myself just kind of observing things and um and it you know it struck me that servers and bartenders are very um reliant on the next table that's handed to them or the next person that sits down and sure. like it or not you guys are salespeople and and uh, your commissions are just tips instead sure. of you know you know same thing so it's very similar to what i did and you kind of had to buck up every time somebody comes in and decide probably as a server or bartender if you know are you going to give them the full treatment you know what is it worth it here what are you going to do are you just going to deliver your food and drinks and not have any personality into it and that sort of thing so it, it becomes a little bit of a sales process depending on what kind of you know tip you think you might be able to pull out of this person to raise your pay for the day sure um so it got me to thinking that there could be something done because i have all these tools i got I got all these tools that I can track my customers. I know when their birthdays are, I know their kids' names, I know their favorite things. I know when they're more likely to buy and less likely to buy. And I have all this information about them that helps me reach out to them on a regular basis. And I also noticed a lot of servers had posts on Facebook. Hey, come sit with me today, you know, Instagram, whatever it is. So I do it all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of struck me and I thought, well, that's a weird awkwardness probably when it comes to that, like, you know if i were to come sit down at your bar without e maybe you didn't know me and we hit it off and talked a little bit is it weird is it awkward to say hey man you know i know we just met an hour ago but could i have your phone number or you want to follow me on facebook i really enjoyed sitting with you and i'd like for you to come back and you know sit with me again sometime you know and and it's just maybe seems a little weird or maybe it takes like two or three dates before we get to that point you know what i mean like so what i decided to do is create um an, an application that's, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, 
a LinkedIn for servers and bartenders. It's, it, it allows you to kind of connect and communicate with your best and favorite customers so that they can more easily in one place know what your schedule is. You can communicate to them one-on-one -on -one or in broadcasts. And it allows you to um, hopefully give yourself a raise by driving the right customers to come sit with you every night, not just hoping they remember your schedule and, and that sort of thing. So um, the app's called Sit With Me. It allows you to put your schedule in there um, and it allows you to decide who follows you and who doesn't. You can be public, you can be private. You can give your information at the end of a at the end of a table at the end of that you know that session. You can say, "Hey, I had a great time. You know, appreciate you sitting with me. Uh, if you haven't yet, follow me on the Sit with Me app, and it'll let you know my schedule, and I can communicate to you and that thing, that sort of thing." And then you don't have to give out all that personal information and start to you know combine your Facebook page with your friends that you don't ever see because they're out in Denver with the regulars that you hope come in and make your night better. And it kind of creates this environment of, uh, of your work customers that you can communicate to and create your brand and drive, um, you know, drive business to your bar that they're going to come directly tip you. And they now know when you're working and to ask for you for the night. Um, let me ask you this. Are you familiar yeah. with the on the bar app? Nope. I don't think so. so. I don't even think it's around anymore. Um, and it sounds, um, what you're talking about sounds similar to what I'm, I'm seeing if it's, if I can get it or not anymore. It sounds similar to what on the bar did. And it was an app that you could put your schedule and stuff into. Um, you know, it's not here anymore. It was, it was definitely more, it was more consumer facing, I guess, but um, you could get on, you could, you could get your schedule, you could broadcast to, to guests, you could broadcast when you were there or not, you could share drink recipes and things like that. Um, and it was a thing, I guess it's been almost 10 years ago when it was a thing. Um, and I'm trying, I can't even pull up any screenshots of anything. Um, did so why did that yeah that's what i was gonna ask did you use it or why did or you didn't use it or why did it fade um i don't know i'm gonna do some research and see if i can pull some more information about it i did use it and you could i think i think the biggest problem was getting like just getting your average customer to download the app i don't think i don't mm -hmm. think enough people really knew about it um and then it connected to your social media. So if you hit, you go on, you hit, I'm on the bar. And then it would automatically broadcast out to your Twitter, your Facebook. And I don't think Instagram was really much of a thing back then. Um, so it kind of do that too. I wish I could find, I wish I could find some screenshots of it or something. We um, can research it too. I, I That's mm -hmm. that's super helpful. I appreciate it. I mean, I think that's generally the idea, although the way that I've built this being a sales guy, I'm, I'm building it more for servers and bartenders to become salespeople and raise their quality sure. of tables. And I think some of the, the, for example, there's a resume builder in there that'll help people um, track uh, co positive comments. There's no, there's no general comments, but people can send messages and that sort of thing followers um in in their history and that sort of thing to build a resume at some point if they want to um, there's an explore feature where you can let's say i land in in um the carmel area right now and i want to see the servers that are working around me at sports bars and i can flip through pictures of the servers and read their bios and see what they're good at and all right maybe i want to go to a fancy joint with a cool bartender that knows how to make specialty drinks and i would land on you um, you have the ability as a server to boost kind of your Google ranking on how high you would show up on that list. So you might drive new people to you by marketing yourself in that, in that manner. Um, so it's definitely, it doesn't, I looked pretty hard to find something that did this already. Mm -hmm. Couldn't really find anything that was active. And this was probably a year and a half ago or so when I was really doing that. Um, but it's, I feel like it's one of those ideas. It's just, it's a glaring area that's missing. Like, you know, I, I did a little homework and 
Um, after some math, I figured out that there is $129 billion changing hands and tips in just the United States every year. Yeah, that's and insane. it's crazy. And there's no, I mean, there could be 50 software tools wrapped around an industry that size sure. um, and, and everybody would have enough to thrive and do okay. So you never know. You wonder if, you know, if that app was just, a, you know, it didn't have good management, it didn't, it didn't run right, it didn't, um, you know, meet certain needs, or maybe they're just looking at it a little differently. You never know what makes one work and one not work. Sure. Um, but it's, a, it's, you know, it's an interesting um, uh, comparison. I'd love to find more out about it. What's, um, what's, what's your, when are you thinking about launching and things like that? I, if I, if it's not, um, on the app store by November, um, look for me on a bridge somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, you know, I think, I, I think I'll have it here pretty soon. Um, I have it on my phone. Um, I think Dakota has it on his in minimal, um, use. You can log in as a server and set your schedules up. Now you can log as in a customer and get your profile set up. And that's about where it is. Every, I was just telling him every Friday, there's a new update and a couple more features are in the mix. So the, the plan is, you know, in, in August sometime, it should be enough to where I can have, you know, a few more people in there to start to kind of kick it around and test it. And really what I plan on doing myself is I'm going to have like three or four cell phones. You know, I know Dakota will, will test it. E will test it. I'm just going to get some close friends and, you know, maybe family and that sort of thing, just to kick around the tires on it and then roll out more of an official testing in probably October where I've got about a hundred servers around Indy here that are, um, that are willing to do it uh, and test it out for me. Well, I'm, I'll help you in any way I can. Also, if you want to take it a little bit larger scale, I am a member of, um, it's a nationwide fraternity of bartenders called the United States Bartenders Guild. Oh, and nice. I can take it to the guild and you know, you'd get a little bit more. Yeah. You'd be able to see what it looks like a little bit more across the country, like see how bigger cities, how it kind of operates in bigger cities and things like that. So anything I can help you out with that, let me know. I appreciate that, man. I definitely will. Yeah. The, the plan now is to, um, you know, try it amongst that smaller group as a test. Cause I'm not, I'm a, you know, my background is in service wrapped around software. That's what I did. Sure. Um, start 10, 10 years ago, started a company and we've sold it three times now. And, and I want to never see another lawyer again in my life because that's who I sell to. And, and that's, and then I kind of landed on this. So I've got the experience of the, you know, the overall process and that sort of thing. Um, so my, my plan is to, um, kind of roll it out to that small group first, see how it goes. And then Dakota and I've picked a handful of cities that we're just going to hammer it when it comes to social media marketing. Luckily I've got a few bucks squirreled away to, to really, um, market in some certain cities. And one of the things that I've been doing is as I, I've never been on Facebook in my life. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, but now I'm on there because I got to market to these types of folks. So sure. I started following all the bartender groups uh, in mm -hmm. various cities um, that, that I want to market to, you know, oddly, you know, I want to, obviously this was going to roll out to the entire country as quickly as I could possibly get it there. So stuff like that uh, will be huge. And I'm not marketing to the consumer. I don't want to go out and tell a bunch of people, you know, Hey, I want you to do this so you can go follow your favorite bartender. Sure. If it works, you know, the bartenders will be the, the best salespeople I could possibly ask yeah. for. So the goal is to, like, for example, I didn't mention there's the ability to tip through this too, right? Like, so if, if you're out sick for a week, people might be worried about you, wonder where you're at. They could go on here and they could find you and tip, tip you directly through Venmo or whatever it is, however you choose cool. to have that done. But like the goal is, is to put more value in servers and bartenders and what they do every day and allow you to stick with your company, your best customers. So if you bounce, I know you were at um, Napoli's before, where are you, where are you now? Anthony shop house up in Carmel. Oh yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So if there's people there that maybe didn't know that you moved, sure. Mm -hmm. They would be able to follow you to, um, to the shop house. Anthony's yeah. Shop that's, house. that's big too. Cause uh, like just, I'm constantly, constantly pe seeing people out and about or people are accidentally finding me at the shop house and wondering where I went and, so that's cool. What, um, what, what questions do you have for me? Like, well, what can I help you with? Yeah, I've got a question. So like, I guess hearing 
a little bit more in detail of what the app is and like the features, how well does it work and align with the way that you're already navigating the workspace? Like you said that you already put out some messages. Where do you put those out? And um, how well would this move in the same way that you're already moving? So I like, I, I guess if I, if I do that, I've got a lot of people that have followed me on Facebook, like regulars and things like that. But mm -hmm. I'm also like, uh, I'm also a little bit of a different case because I've been doing this for 25 years and just have so many regulars. Um, but I throw up on Facebook once in a while if the restaurant's doing anything cool, like if we're having any, any specials or events or if we bring new spirits in, um, things like that that people would be interested in. And like, I'm just talking about the bar aspect really, but you could do it with the food aspect too. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely keep that in mind. Um, but to have something like actually disconnected from that. So like, cause sometimes I do feel like I'm, uh, I don't know. It's not like, I'm like, well, there's people here that don't really care what I'm doing. <laughs> you know? Well, you're going to have friends that are not even within driving distance of yeah. where you're working, you know? So I think that's kind of what we're discovering is like, there's a lot of people who Facebook is a little bit of home base or people have a home base for the regulars, but they're hesitant on over sharing or maybe over communicating because you have that like feeling of, am I just creating noise for a certain yeah. group of people? So pulling all these people into the one space is kind of what we're trying to do as it's obvious that you already have some sort of way of collecting these regulars, communicating with them. Um, so yeah, it's interesting to hear that. And it's kind of nice to hear that. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's awesome. I think, uh, I, like, I think it would be really great to be able to take that off, at least to the extent, uh, and, and especially for a lot of people that aren't like, so much of this is my identity now that I've done it for 25 years. Mm -hmm. and if, it's, if it's not completely your identity and you don't want to mix your like your private life with your work life, I, th I, th I think it's great. I think that's key too. And the other thing that we've learned a lot, you know, not that you're not a, a handsome fellow, but you know, the, the ladies, man, the ladies will have some issues and some concerns when it comes to stalking and things sure. like that. And, or, you know, creepy guys. And it's, it's kind of a bummer because they just don't know, um, can, should they give their Facebook, their Instagram, their, their phone number? Yeah. To, I didn't even think about that. That would be huge. Yeah, to, mm -hmm. so they got now it's in this confined place that's work related. And then we they have the ability to block report, keep stay private, be public, whatever they want. And and they can kind of, you know, identify people that are being inappropriate that then we go and handle by, you know, it's no different than an Instagram, right? They can block them and that sort of thing. And they could be sneaky if they wanted to, I guess. But um, so like getting some of that stuff where there's the hesitancy or the weirdness of giving personal information or, you know, like you said, your, your social media may be for friends and that sort of thing. And there's not as much crossover. So um, one, one question I wondered too, because we've talked to a few different folks, um, different types of restaurants, styles of restaurant. Um, and my goal on this is, I, you know, I, I know that there's a certain category and demographic of folks that probably do this already um, a ton. You know, they do it on Snapchat, they do it on Instagram, they post to post to post all this kind of stuff. Sure. But in my mind too, I, I feel like uh, somebody at a higher end restaurant like you're at might even value it a little bit more because, you know, nothing against an Applebee's, but if you go into an Applebee's, you're going to get what you're going to get. And you kind of know that, but I would imagine that your customers probably tend to expect something a little higher end and they probably get used to great service from you and the folks that are in your restaurant. So one of the things that I've, I've gone back and forth with, because I've heard a lot of folks at like a pub, they're like, oh, I would tell this five or six people a night and, and they would really be into it. I haven't talked to as many people at the restaurants at your level. Do you see those types of folks, even maybe technically their technology challenged a tiny bit, but wishing that they always knew when you were working and using it as much? Uh, yeah, and I, I almost think it like, I almost think it, 
adds like an extra level of service to, to what we do, you know, like, um, and most of the people at this level were, were all, I mean, this is our career. It's not, it's not what we're, it, it's not what we're doing. Like after college, like, right. you know, so, um, I could really see it adding a lot of value to higher in restaurants, especially places like us where, we're constantly having menu changes and you can feature different things. And um, I just see so, guests and service of bartenders getting a lot of value out of it. So like, let me, let me give an example, Zach, let's say I'm one of your regulars, but you know, we're not close friends, but sure. you know, I come in to see you, but I don't have your personal contact information and I'm 60 years old. So I don't use Instagram. So I can either come see, I can either go to dinner at Anthony's Chop House um, Friday or Saturday, but without calling the restaurant or having your personal contact information, I have no idea of, of knowing whether you're going to be there Friday or Saturday. And I sure. want to come specifically on the night that you're going to be there because I know you're going to take care of me. So this is one of those examples where you could, I mean, and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you could... Um, sort of upload your schedule and send out kind of a blast notification out to anybody that's that's following you to let them know hey i'm i'm in anthony's on wednesday friday and saturday right is that kind of a yeah well yeah and i'll let me take it real quick one step further because that's exactly where i was getting to go you know your amazing customer here mr e who comes in you know he loves silver oak wine and he's a big fan of lobster tails and you know that extra level of service that you're talking about you know you could message him directly um or you could put him in a group they don't see each other in the group so if you've got five mr e's it looks like it's a direct message coming from you but you could say hey uh, i just wanted to let you know that we got a new shipment of your favorite wine in and the special tonight is lobster I'd love to see you tonight. Please pop in and see me. Um, you know, please let me know if there's anything you need that could make your stay more enjoyable. And you could have that dialogue with him, you know, earlier in the day, the day before, whatever it is. Um, and like me, the sales guy, you know, I know when I'm going to go sell to the Simon Property Group or whoever it is I'm working with, I better treat those folks right because they're going to, you know, bring a pretty big commission for me. And I, there's certain things that I want to do to make sure they feel comfortable. It's a similar situation, I would think, for you. Do you have the ability inside the apps to keep notes on guests? Yeah, so that's one of the things that we're going to allow you to put, you know, notes, information, like I'm thinking birthdays, kids' names, favorite drinks, you know, whatever it is. Sure. My my dad, God love him, he's 80, 82 years old, and the server that he liked at, at Perkins or wherever the heck it was, they he he was known as Bud Light and Iced Tea with my mom. That's They remembered him by those names and they always took care of him. And, and I thought, well, maybe a lot of servers are just great. They just know that sort of thing. But you could put that information in so that you know, you know the whole family, what they drink or whatever their favorites are. I think that's huge. Yeah, little notes on customers are key. Do you have any hesitancy in like you already established, you already have a way of communicating to people. Do you see yourself being able to flip over quite easily into something like this or how would you navigate that? Uh, yeah, I think it would be pretty easy. I like, you know, I, I think, I think the biggest thing is communication with your guests to be able to get them onto it. But mm -hmm. I think, I think for people that people that do have a good regular base, I think it's a pretty easy sell to get people to, to to download an app on their phone to be able to get that information yeah so the thought behind that which i'm glad you brought that up um the first couple of marketing videos that we're going to put out there too are going to be examples of how to maybe broach that conversation but in release two which should be out probably right around uh, january i'd say 22 it's going to have a qr code um that you could either just hold your phone up and have them scan it you could put it you could order stickers through um, our merch store that will send you your QR code on a sticker that you could put, you know, a little guy that you could put on the bill or a stamp that you could put on the bill. So they could just scan it right there. They could say, Hey, follow me, you know, and sit with me. And then they scan it, that sort of thing. So yeah, the, the ease of that, I think as the sales guy too, I think if you have people that are teaching you the pitch, 
on, you know, how to close the deal, how to do it. It's helpful, right? So what we want to do is really try and teach servers how to make that ask and take the awkwardness out of it. You know, um, you know, Hey, I had a great time sitting with you. You know, here's the check. If you need anything else, let me know. Also I'm on the app, sit with me, please, you know, scan this QR code or, or look me up. I would love for you to come back in if, you know, if you had a good time, that sort of yeah. thing. And um, I think that, I think that'll be huge. Yeah. I feel like it's a pretty easy ask. I don't, I don't feel like it's too much. Yeah. You're already saying it, right? A lot of times, you know, mm -hmm. you say, you know, had a great time, come back and sit with me, or you even sometimes folks will blurt out their schedule, you know, that sort of thing. So, I mean, they're already sort of doing it. It just hopefully makes it a little bit easier and takes um, some of the remembering out of it for the customer. Yeah. It, well, and I've, I've gotten into a thing now too, where since we're so busy, just, just kicking back to our conversation about privacy a little bit like i've been giving a lot of my guests my cell phone number so they right. can text me like can we get a couple seats at the bar and that's another aspect that i would like to get mm -hmm. away from like it's great and i make a lot of money because of that but if i didn't have to get my personal phone number out that would be awesome exactly what does that yeah. look like or how do you give that information out are you giving it out to everyone is this like a second interaction type communication or what what's kind of your standard work surrounding that I only give out my personal number to like people that I see at least once a week and have mm -hmm. a really great rapport with. Um, and like people will buy seats at that bar. We're so busy that if we can, mm -hmm. you know, if we can reserve space for two, like that could mean an extra hundred dollars at the end of the night. Um, just before they buy anything, like here, here's a hundred bucks for saving the spot for us. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the, the, the way I handle it right now is I've just got, I've got a, a business card and I'm just like, Hey, give me, give me a call next time. I'll make sure you get a seat. Um, and that's how I take care of it. That's cool. I, I think there's a whole, you know, again, you're such a higher level restaurant, but there's a whole disruptive aspect to, to this app and what it can do. And I think, way down the line, you know, I, I hope to see things changing in that, you know, your pre-shift meetings, you're, you're talking about, all right, hey, who's, who's got who coming in? Have you communicated with any of your regulars? You know, we know that, you know, Mr. E likes to have this end seat at the bar here, and we'll make sure we reserve for those. He usually comes in around seven, and so-and-so has a big family, so we'll want to, you know, plan for him and get this ready. So you can start to see that happening, but then, you know, playing it forward too. like people want reservations at a restaurant, but sometimes they want a reservation with their server as well. Sure. And so, you know, maybe spinning it forward, it's you're, and you're kind of alluding to it there is it, it leads you down the path of thinking, maybe I can get a reservation at this restaurant with the specific server that I want. Sure. And as a, as a traveling sales dude, you know, I had, I was down in Dallas and I had a server that weighed on Tony Romo all the time. And same thing here at St. Elmo's and Indies with Peyton Manning. Sure. And I thought that was awesome. And I wanted to take a customer back and try and guarantee that I got that person and had them tell the same stories. And it, yeah. it wasn't really possible. Have you thought about teaming up with like any of the um, like electronic reservation systems like Open Table or anything like that? A little bit, yeah. Um, I've thought about it, and I don't. Do you know who Gary V is by any chance? Yeah. Yeah. So he he uh, started Resi, um, sure. and and that's you know higher end reservation. And so I'm a bit of a Gary V nut, and I went in on his on his NFTs and all that kind of stuff, uh, pretty heavy. And one of the ones that I got uh, affords me three meetings with him, um, and so. While I think the charm of what we're doing is that we can go directly to the server and I don't have to go convince an entire establishment to download software and get all these approvals. Mm -hmm. I can just get the servers, you know, to, to try it. Um, and, and those things blew up to such large numbers with minimal, you know, there's 450, 500,000 restaurants in the United States. Resi sold for nine figures and it only had 40,000 installs. Sure. If you think about the sheer numbers of what we can do just by getting individuals at all these restaurants committed, not having to commit the whole franchise or the whole whatever, 
I, I feel like the starting point is the individual servers and bartenders. And then as it sort of expands and takes over, there's going to be a marketing component that we'll do if, you know, the local B-dubs up the street that has three franchises, they want to, you know, have us do the marketing for them and send their messages out and help them facilitate all that. There will be that. And then maybe the next step is then trying to get purchased or merged with something like an notebook table or a resi or something like that, where, where we're getting reservations with the person and the restaurant, not just the restaurant. Awesome. And it's not costing the server or bartender any money, right? I mean, no, yeah. The only time where you can spend money as a server or bartender is if you want to boost yourself in that explore ranking. So if you think about it, you go to work at night and, and you're probably one of 100 bartenders within a two or three mile radius. And there's the explore feature where you can flip through the map and filter down by the type of restaurant you want to eat, let's say. And then you can start flipping through server bartender profiles one after the other. And so people may decide, just like Google, you may decide where you're going to go eat by page two. If you want to guarantee that you're at page one or the top one or the top 10 or whatever it is, then you can pay money to kind of boost your ranking. But it's pretty minimal. At least that's what we're, what we're shooting for. But the, the people, the only way I'm going to charge people in the beginning is for people that want to, customers that want to see future schedules. They can see who's working right now uh, around them. But if you want to plan ahead, like I do as a traveling sales dude, then, then you'll pay something minimal, like a buck or two a month. Is, um, is there a cost to download the app for, the, for your guests on the customer side of it? Nope. nope. Everything's, it's called freemium these days. I have a mm-hmm. term I learned. I love it. Uh, yeah, everything's free. The only time a guest will get dinged is if they try and see what your schedule is next week. Mm-hmm. So you can tell them, you know, and they could, if they're going to decide who, where to eat tonight, they can open it up and they can see tonight free of charge and they can see all the servers that are working wherever they're going, anywhere in the country, really, tonight. And then when they go to say, well, let's see who's working tomorrow, because I feel like there's a planning aspect to this. Like if you're not working tonight and I like to come into the chop house, I may say, well, you know what? Let's see when he is working. Let's see if Zach's working tomorrow or the next day. And we'll go in there there and we'll go somewhere else tonight. So we can start to plan our meals and where we go around the people that we like to sit with. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I just need, I just needed for a little bit of it, a little bit of them to pay. I don't need, I don't need everybody to pay. Sure. Mm-hmm. Do you have any concerns or hesitations on adopting a new app or like now that you kind of know what's going on with it, you downloading it and using it for the foreseeable future? Like, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's, it's easy enough. Mm-hmm. I think like, like our generation and then down under us, especially are all tech savvy and most of our lives mm-hmm. are based around these things anyway. Um, I, I spend more time on my phone these days like i do everything on it mm-hmm. um but you can you we we're talking about earlier you can send money like you can literally do anything on your phone plus it's got all the sum of all human knowledge at the, at the tip of your finger too so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lost yeah. Without it. no i i don't think it's i don't think it's that hard to adapt i think the technology is easy enough um what yep. about the what about the restaurant industry? I, you're only the I've talked to probably mm-hmm. ten or twelve managers and GMs and that sort of thing, and you're only the second manager type person that we've we've talked to in this setting. And one of the worries that I I heard initially, the first few times I brought it up, was from the managers thinking, "Well, shit, now I got to deal with a." Uh, somebody coming in and asking for Zach all the time or asking for Amy all the time or whatever. And, and all of a sudden you get Amy's section is full and there's three other servers that you kind of got to keep happy. So I think I, I'll, I, I'll let you give me your thoughts on it first, but I've got a couple ideas of why I think that's good and bad, but you know, what do you, how do you see the, the managers in the restaurants reacting to something like that? I mean, I, at and the be end honest. Of the day, at the end of the day, your goal is to own a busy restaurant. You know, there's nothing more expensive in a restaurant than an empty seat. 
Um, so I right. think, I think if you're in a busy restaurant setting and say you do have, um, like say only five people in Anthony out of the hundred of us at Anthony shop house, five of us adopt the app and say, we start driving a ton of business towards ourselves. Like that's not going to, that's just going to drive other business to your other servers and bartenders at the restaurant. Like you're, you're getting more regulars, but those walk-ins or, or people that you haven't built uh, the regular base with yet, those are, what am I trying to say? Those are going to the other servers and bartenders that haven't adopted the app. So it's kind of like the, the rising tide raises all ship kind of thing, I guess. I see. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, like, I don't, I don't know if, if you were in a slower restaurant, um, I could see maybe that being a little bit of a problem, but at the same time, like no matter what, you're driving more business through the door. So I don't know. I could see I how some, some servers or bartenders might get jealous or upset, but then that just gives them more incentive to download your app mm -hmm. and start driving their own sales as well. So Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's I, I, part I don't, of the, I don't the think it's necessarily process. a bad thing. Yeah. You got it. It's hopefully it points out the rock stars and who's working hard and that sort of thing. And then it's an indication to the others that may, maybe I need to learn something from Zach. I need to figure out what he's doing because everybody keeps coming in and asking for him. And, and so, you know, and, and maybe from a manager standpoint, you know, now you put Zach on, on the, make sure you get him in there on the night when you got the special that you really need to move and you got a bunch of extra food and you give him a slightly bigger section because you know he can handle it and you get him some support and that sort of thing. Like from a business owner standpoint, um, it, it, I think it's helpful in pointing out who your rock stars are and who might need to improve a little bit. Yeah. Like, I got a quick question. Zach, when you were down in Miami, like a month or so ago, did you have specific restaurants that you knew you were going to be going to, or did you like do a little research when you were down there to find out where you wanted to, where you wanted to go? A little bit of both. Um, for whatever reason, Miami's got, so there's this list. It's, it's at the top hundred cocktail bars in the world. And Miami's got the highest concentration in any city. So right. like going down, I was like, all right, I've got to go to these four spots. Um, but then I reached out to, I reached out to the United, the, the USBG, the United States Bartenders Guild in Miami. I was like, hey, my wife and I are in town for the weekend. Like, where should we go to dinner? So it's so kind of a little bit of both. Yeah. And then if you were going to like a city you'd never been to before, I don't know, you know, Bozeman, Montana. Yeah. And you're going there next weekend and you've got, you know, a couple nights to go out to eat. How would you as a consumer, how would you like kind of decide on where you might want to go? Honestly, as much as I hate this answer, this is what I do. Um, Cause I've got, I've got some pretty big uh, issues with Yelp and their business practices, but any, like I still use it all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. to pull up to see what's around me that's cool and like yelp's done some pretty stupid stuff um as far as like pay to play things with restaurants and i don't think they're serving the community I, love you. I don't think they're serving the community as well as they should be but still to this day i get on and i'll flip through a couple of reviews and you can tell like if a restaurant's got a a good rating like you you can figure out if it's going to be a good restaurant or not mm -hmm. um so yeah, I, use I, all, I, I use it all the time for that mm -hmm. yep. okay. so what what other advice would you have for us that you think mm -hmm. uh you know down as we move down this path um you know we you should know, off, off the top of my head like everything i've heard so far it all sounds like great ideas um when you get to that point, I'd love to help you beta test it just so okay. I can check it out. And I think, I think like getting your hands on something like that and being able to kind of work with it that will get my brain working a little bit more on it. Sure. Like mm -hmm. it's more tangible. Um, but off the top of my head, nothing really, but just know like anything I can do to help you out on this. I'm, I'm here for you guys. So.
I appreciate that, man. I really do. I, that bartender's guild thing is something I hadn't even thought of. And I, I mm-hmm. think, you know, like I know there's trade shows and you can go to Vegas and do things and, and that all sounds cool. I really sure. like the, the grassroots idea yeah. of, you know, I plan on spending months, um, you know, DMing these restaurant um, meme pages and, sure. and offering them deals to do things, you know, help me out. I'm going to try and do, uh, like, like it or not, man, some of these um, servers and ladies, especially that maybe are bottle service type girls that have 50,000 followers and that sort of thing, you know, sure. I'll buy them a stinking Gucci bag if I have to, to get them to post mm-hmm. it a few times, I mean, whatever yeah. I got to do. So, I mean, anything and everything is open to um, uh, from when it comes to marketing. But my goal is to really focus on some of these higher end restaurants because I think the other stuff will come. Sure. And I don't want it to look like crap. Like I don't want it to look like tender when you get out there mm-hmm. and you know, a bunch sure. of chicks that are, you know, flaunting themselves. I want it to, I want, you know, guys like you to be out there the most. Yeah. Um, well, so that, and, and like I said, that, that, um usbg like the, there's ten thousand of us nationwide um and that's that's just a phone call to the president of each chapter head say like just making the introduction for you guys yeah. and then, um each chapter head can take it to their members and show them but i, I think that's yeah. i think that's really easy that's cool. well and free free way to do it yeah mm-hmm. well and i you know i'd be happy to you know when the time's right i'll sponsor something you know if there's some type of event or whatever it is and then the other cool thing that we're gonna uh, have it able to do is some coupon codes and things like that so like um you know we reward people that help push it and get people to sign in or you know giving you know if you want to give your customers three free months of the of the ability to see schedules in the future, you know, that type of thing, like sharing that with the entire group in the beginning, you know, I just want downloads, right. That's what we're looking for is downloads. So we want it. It'll, it'll become cool if it's cool. Um, but we want people to try it and and see if they like it. So whatever it takes to get people to download it. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for you. This is, this is pretty neat. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate it. Well, um, I appreciate your time, man. I, this has been a fun one. You know, we've, we've, uh, we've, we've started with some folks that we know and that are friends and, and we're, we're slowly branching out into people that are going to, you know, ask some tougher questions. And so we appreciate <laughs> you, uh, interviewing us just as much as uh, we interviewed you. Cause it's super helpful to, to get the word out there and understand your concerns and where you think it might, um, work and not work. Oh.